Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show again. Do you know some of the best eating fish is the sea fish? We've got a lot of ours back obviously nowadays, but years ago one of the best eating fish was skate and chips from our traditional English fish and chip shops. So here's Tomo aboard the Long Lagoon, the skipper, showing us briefly how to prep a skate for cooking. Right here in, the, here in the Bristol Channel, one of the most popular fish to take home for the table uh, would be our, our rays, thornback rays in particular, and that's skate wings. So what I'm going to show you now is just a, a fairly simple, now there is no simple way with, with rays, but a fairly straightforward way to skin the ray, uh, have the wings, have that in your cool box so you can take home for dinner later. Two things are very, very important when using rays. One is making sure you've got a, a good sharp knife. Uh, the skin's very, very tough on some of the rays, particular thornback rays that we've got here. And then, if not a pair of pliers, a, a, an actual pair of skinning pliers, fish skinning pliers. Now these are catfish skinning pliers, um, very, very popular in the US and actually you might find it uh, easier to get on um, one of the sites and, and import them. They're not expensive, I think these cost me a tenner. Okay. What we're going to do, there isn't necessarily a need to gut the ray as such, I'm just going to score the wings, Okay, and then I'm going to use use my pliers to then start taking the skin off. Okay. Just going to run my knife under the skin, down through the wing. Going to do the same this side as well. Okay, so a nice sharp knife, you're just going to start to score the, on the skin. underneath the skin. This is a very, very tough skin. And then we're going to take our pair of pliers. Start grabbing if I turn around. And start pulling. And we're just going to strip the skin, peel the skin back. So you can see why some people have, see it's got a few spikes here and it just didn't quite peel off um, particularly well so I'm just going to run a knife underneath, underneath them just to help get them out. Water. I'll go over the side. Then we're going to take our skate wings, give them a rinse in the seawater, a bit of a clean off, and pop them in the cool box for later. There we go.
wings winged their way straight into the totally awesome kitchen and yes, into my frying pan. Along with some veg, they made a great meal and I'll tell you what, I don't know what was better, the skate or that blues track. And do you know what? I have no problem trying a bit of skate. I've had it before because I've actually eaten a 34 pound stingray. It was over here, the tail is here, caught in 1985 in Exuma in the Bahamas from the shore. I was on a bone fishing trip for a magazine on a commission work and some people with a yacht were on the end of the, under the jetty and I was fishing away and I caught, caught this stingray and went all around the moorings and a huge epic battle with it and they said, gee, we'll eat that, whatever, I don't have a problem with people eating fish. They love eating fresh fish, they've been on the yacht a long time so they're well into eating fish. And then they said, would you like to come aboard the yacht tonight and we'll cook it on there? Well, of course, I was on my own because I was doing freelance photography and journalism. I said, yes, but when I think about it in retrospect in older years, it was kind of a dumb thing to do, wasn't it, Graham? No, not eating the stingray. The stingray was fine. I'm here to prove it 35 years later. But getting onto a total stranger's boat, they could have taken me off and had their wicked way with me. Mmm, I can almost taste that fish. Now then, what is something different, river fishing? Do you know, wading is something that people don't really seem to do as much as they used to in our rivers. Years ago, 40 years ago or so, it was all popular. You could get in, and of course waders, providing you go to a shallow river, and you know, you keep within your depth, all the usual health and safety stuff, I call it common sense really. If you have a pair of waders, you open up a whole new vista of swims that other anglers can't get to. I'm going to run through some waders here, don't fish off, because there's a bit of fishing that is brand new at the end of this chat. Okay, the most common and possibly the cheapest access to wading in a river is a pair of what they call thigh waders. Thigh waders, yes that's right, they come up to your thigh. They're not really expensive to buy, there's various different brands. I can't tell you how many years I've had these, but you can of course, and they will get punctures eventually. Look. You can repair them, these have been repaired. Um, I just use bicycle repair patches on them. So these are just regular rubber ones, and that's the sole they have. Can you see the grip there? So to give you a good grip on the bottom, they're a rigid sole, but make sure you do get a good fit, because what you're gonna to have to put on really to keep your feet warm are a pair of wading socks. So these will be you can, listen, you can go in a fishing tackle shop and buy wading socks, or you can go in a normal shop and buy long socks, wool ones. So you want a nice long pair of socks. So, if you're going to buy a pair of waders, make sure you take a pair of socks with you, or two thick pairs, and put those on so you get the right size. Because I didn't, and I do find when the water compresses the sides of these, it actually pinches on the outside of my ankle a bit. So, there you go, that's, that's the first type. Now, they have little lanyards here, which you can clip through your belt to help hold them up. Yes, I've done plenty of wading and gone over depth and got soaking, we all do, trying to get that little bit farther out in the river to the swim. But they, you can also get this type, which probably would be a bit better quality than those. It's, it's more supple. And these have, if you're gonna see those there, studs here. Can you see the studs? Studs in the bottom. Now that gives you some good grip, but I would be really wary if I say I took these across rocks on the sea with green weed because they will really skate. They can skate, you know. They're, they're fine for gravel, uh, mud and stuff like that, but I'll just be, a, be aware that you know if they can skid on smooth flat rocks. So there's those two pairs. Even better, you can get a pair of what are called chess waders. I've had a couple of pairs of waders that I'm talking in my lifetime. I had one pair, they were really rigid, really stiff ones. They were made by a company, but they lasted, by golly did they last, 30 years. They were called, I think, if they're still trading, Muckluck, M-U-K-L-U-K. -K. No, I'm not selling them. They don't pay me to say that. I just had some really good use out of them until they finally expired. You'll see them in my boat launching films. Really thick, thick green waders, but they are a bit thick. thick. These ones, the more modern ones, are, I'm going to say better, 
you're going to say better. But they were sort of neoprene base to them. They got kneeling pads there, so if you're kneeling down to net the fish, and the top, this one's filthy. They're all soft and supple, and they've got a holding pouch at the front here. In there, you put, you put bits and bobs in there. But as you'll see, it doesn't have the shaped boot support there. So these are lovely and warm, they're supple. But what I do, I get a pair of old trainers. This is for my boat launcher. And again, if you see any boat launcher films, and I'm wearing these, you'll see I had those, with the laces out, and they go over the top here. Like that. You, you just put, put these inside there. I don't bother with the lace because this is so thick, I need to open that right up. And of course, I've then got the grip as well on here, and I don't want to damage the bottom of those. Alternatively, I can use these. Now these are the bottom end of my chest waders that I mentioned previously, those muckluck ones, and you can see I've had them years, I've virtually worn the tread off them. They're brilliant, very, very stiff, very hard. So they started leaking, puncture, leaking, puncture, leaking, puncture. Finally I figured they're done. Don't waste the bottom half gram. So I've cut them off just here, about just below the knee length. I can also use those here. If I, I'm going to call it the stockinged area, can go inside here and now I won't pierce this. So if I was going wading across the river, I would be using these as well as that. When I'm just launching the boat, I just use the trainers because it's so much quicker. I find the neoprenes are a bit hard to get off. Now these ones, I can't tell you. I'll tell you, somebody out there from British Columbia, get in touch with Fred Helmer, who's on Chilliwet Tackle, and say, Fred, there's that guy from England, he had some waders off you. They're called, they're walled down. All I can say is, I've had them, I've been using them 15 odd years. I didn't think they'd last very long. I thought, well, they're a bit light and flimsy. But I used them with Fred well, when we were over there in British Columbia doing salmon fishing and stuff like that off the uh, Fraser River gravel bars. So brilliant. So these, Fred, are still going. Somebody tell Fred, Fred, your waders are still going, mate, 12 or 15 years up the road, might be longer. So these are very, very lightweight. Okay? Now, then I've got the luxury of sitting down to put these on to show you. I won't bother putting the wading socks on. I just thought it was worth showing people because there might be youngsters out there. Youngsters, you're always best wading in twos. And you take what's called a wading staff. So you can wear them, okay, up high like this. This particular one has like a popper system there, I think, that goes through there. All I do, to be honest with you, is I just do this. I go through my belt once. I don't bother clipping them tight or anything. Twice. And that's enough just to hold them up like that. But if you're walking around, what they used to do a lot of the time, personally me, I prefer them up high like this, just walking around like this. But some people, if they're sitting down, they get hot, so they roll them down. So you can just roll them down to about knee length. It's more in the summer if you're in hot countries. Mind you, I've never taken a pair of waders to Lake Victoria in Africa. The only thing is, some of them don't have any clips, you know, to pop back up in there. So you need to put the tag in, back up inside. So you can wear them. You can actually walk around with them like that, you know. Don't make the mistake I've done before and then go wading and forget you've got them rolled, rolled down because it's a wet experience. So there you go, it gives you guys there. Also, as well as waders, if you're using chest waders, you want to get yourself a wading staff. Yes, you can go into a shop and buy a nice expensive one. It's a piece of wood with a Y notch in the top. Or you can go into the wood somewhere and get yourself a free one, which is a piece of wood with a notch in the top. This is a triple headed conga gaff for short sure. fishing. Just imagine it's a Y like, like this. It's a Y so you can put your thumb in it and you're going to go wading, checking the depth. What I used to do when I did a bit of chest wading was I'd come below the chest wading area from the top about six inches. I'd paint a little ring around my wading staff here so I knew I'm not going to suddenly get to disappear boom, 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 down a hole. Okay, so just be aware of that. And of course, if you want, it does make a lot of sense, doesn't it? It does make sense. I don't use it on thigh waders because I'm not going in deep water. Yeah, just, this is my boat, one of the boat ones I think. You can get real lightweight, get in there. Uh, life jackets, I don't call this a life jacket, I think the correct term is 
a buoyancy aid. Someone will be on there saying, it's not a life jacket. We call it a buoyancy aid. It could save your life. Um, you've got pull cord with it, you can pull with it. Obviously, it fills up with air on impact with water sometimes, we hope. So, there you go. That's a few tips there. Now, I will recount a story. I was salmon fishing, again on a magazine uh, commission story. I was going on the Tweed, fishing on the Tweed. And uh, there was another river there, and I think, I think it was called the Ettrick. Anybody in Scotland? Is there a river Ettrick? Anyhow, the hotel sent me up with the fishing. They sent me off on my own, which was strange, you know. <laughs> anyway, I went wading with chess waders on the Ettrick and the wading staff. And I can remember, they had a bit of rain overnight, and I wasn't happy, I wasn't happy being quite deep, a fast flowing salmon water, throwing out this salmon fly line. And because I want to get a long cast, I want to get away from the bank this side. So I'm moving away, moving away, trying to not get snagged with my back cast. I didn't fish properly, I didn't fish well, I did not enjoy it, I'll be perfectly honest. And then, even worse, I suddenly start to realise I'm not walking, Oopsie, oopsie, I'm trotting. The current can get you, and if I'd have gone into a deep pool, I would have been away with the fairies. I did, however, know if I dig it out of depth, I'm losing the wading staff, I'm losing the rod, I'm going to bring my feet up high, and I should get air in there, and hopefully paddle my way to the bank. Look out, there'll be something on YouTube somewhere about how to save your life if you fall in the water. I'll tell you who used to do one. I saw it years ago a film, I think it was Hugh Falkus, who was a sea trout expert, and I think he went and threw himself in the river in a pair of waves and showed people how, don't panic, don't, oh, they pull you down and drown you, not if you lay back, apparently. Anyway, I want to show you a bit of fishing. I've been wading recently up on the River Y. I had the most outlandish barbell session I've ever, ever had in my life in three, I think it was three, it was under four hours, three and a bit hours. It was crazy. I'm holding the film back. I'll put it up probably later next year for you guys. Um, so I'm doing this one in 2020. I'm gonna show you a clip of just how good the fishing was. And yeah, I'm wading. I used to do a lot of wading and float fishing and free lining for barbel on the Hampshire Raven years ago. This would be a first on the River Y for me. Water's water. Boots are boots. My God, that's tight. Right, it's in. Come on, fish. You see, it's gone quiet again now. You see, so I think I change again, change again, change again. You could sit there, sort of like carp fishing, just waiting and waiting and waiting. I don't always like waiting for the evening. If I was fishing a slower moving river that I actually knew, I don't know this river at all. Um, I would probably be quite happy just to fish mid-afternoon into the first hour of darkness. Dusk as we go. All barbel fishermen know is when the world's going to hopefully keel over. God, it's like putting a pair of tights on. Let's hope they're all right. I can't get out fast enough, guys. I just cannot get out fast enough. Now to go out there I was going to fish there and I've had to move right down here and then I'll come down here and wade it out. I found this channel. OMG. I've had eight barbel now in under, under one hour. That's the fastest amount of barbel I've ever caught in my life, to be honest. It's ridiculous. I'm going to try, I gave the trick to chap some meat because they're on meat big time, but it's got to be rolled and you've got to have the technique and you've got to touch ledger. He's gone down below me now to try and get obviously in there but there this is this is a hole down here it must be loaded with them i'm going to run a bit of clip here see i doubt i'll get one take live now i've said that so it's running through running through running through i spool off let it sink there's the tap i have one tap there and there you go boys there you go there you go wallop Number nine. This is absolutely the most outlandish barbel swim I've ever fished. I'd like to have got that 10 or 11 pounder because that was a big fish. Look at this. This is just beautiful clear water, boulders everywhere, a rod hooped over, maxed out. Does it get any better? Yeah, another one after this one. Ten, double figures. 
That is absolutely the honeypot of all barbel holes. Of course it could change, one flood, it's changed. How lucky was it? If the, if the guy was in that swim, I'd be up, if it wasn't in there, which I didn't think he was, so I moved up, I would have been in there. Because I wanted to fish up that side. Just looked at this and I thought, that's a channel, that's what we call, it. it's a choke, a choke point, pushes food through. If it chokes, there's a good chance in fast water, there's going to be barbel in there. It was a gamble that paid off, hopefully, if I get this one in. Big time. That's bloody... Do you know, guys, I think most of the fish will be just down up from that stone over there. You're joking. I can't even get to the stone. I can't get to it. The bait's nailed before it goes down. Great big chunks of luncheon meat. Here he comes. It will seem to be about four or five pounds, four pounds, that sort of size. Look at this fish, look, look, it's only the net, you can just, you can just play them, barely lift them out of the water. Here he comes, he's not done yet, not done yet. We'll fish into hand, take your time. Beautiful gold here, look at that. And that's a, that's, a, that's a foreign hook nobody knows about. There you go, another beauty, look at that set in there. Look at it, back you go. Go on. Right. What do you think? You guys are fishing with me now. This is all live fishing. Live fishing. You reckon I could do it again? Do you reckon I could get number 10? Wow. Well, let's try. Let's try. I might not be far enough over this time. I don't think I'm quite far enough over. But we'll try it. It's just a pause. Oh. oh no. Oh no. I think that's a chub. That doesn't count. There you go, it's a chub. My God, it's a little chub, look, nailed it. A great big piece. He could barely get it in his mouth. God, I can't fish far. I can't get the meat on fast enough. It's absolute. Well, I'll tell you what it is, guys. It's bloodlust, isn't it? That's, it's bloodlust. If you haven't got it, you'll never be a good fisherman. End of. I'm going to run this camera. Just see if there's anything else I can nail for you. There's a bite, missed it. Could have been a small chub. They will go off these barbs, I'd love to get 10. 10 barbel in about just over the hour. Missed him. Right, wait till I get hooked up now so I can't concentrate and film at the same time. What's happening is the barbel's laying here. The meat's coming through really fast. They've got to go across, grab it and move back on station. So they're only moving it that much. They're not folding the rod round. Most people wouldn't even know the bite but I'm touch leather so I can feel it. So there you go people, pretty good session that was. I think I finished 16 barbel in three and a half hours. Unbelievable. I would never ever have had those fish and found that swim if I hadn't taken my waders with me. I sussed it a bit on the first trip. I only had Wellingtons, I couldn't get close enough. I had a couple of three barbel, again, that's another film. Hadn't been seen yet. I thought I'm gonna hit that with a bait apron, load of luncheon meat, Pop of thigh waders, get out there, get where the fish are, paid off. Anyway, I'm just going to do a little design walk so you can see the waders. What I did forget to tell you was, if you've got chest waders, loose ones, it's a lot better if you put a belt around the middle because they're baggy and pull them in tight. So, the way that fish and are going to amongst you, I'm just going to model the various outfits I've shown you. Enjoy. So here we have Clarissa, who's just modelling the latest in design wear. As you can see, the rubberized leggings there, which can be stretched. They have boots at the bottom to give plenty of grip. Can be folded down, in fact, for ease of movement. Freedom of movement is what every person likes. In addition, the chest waders can have an accessorising of a belt. Oh, yes, tuck that belt in, keep it tight. As you can see, it is very, very movement orientated also accessorizing you've got the life support there system in the pockets you can have a packet of hooks or indeed a can of luncheon meat if you're a barbel fisherman but if you fish for big things in alaska that's right you're going to need one of these the instant accessory to protect yourself finally look at the movement this man has and these are the waders of the future he should also be paid at least four or five thousand pounds a week 
with skill like this. At his age, it's a wonder the joints are even moving. Now, my way is a roll, but the current trend, fairly modern, is to have a felt sole on the uh, bottom of the boot. And on top of the felt sole, you can also put additional studs. It's an option. You can go online, you can check stuff out like that. However, it's worth pointing out that they reckon, given snow or mud, the felt clogs. So on ordinary rocks, when the felt is, say, new and clean, they give you apparently really good, good traction, good grip. But once you go into mud and it clogs up, skating, and if you walk through snow, oh boy, you better enter yourself for the slalom or the men's downhill. Be aware of that. The other thing is, some states in America apparently ban the use of felt waders because apparently, let's say, microorganisms, eggs of invasive species, that sort of stuff, we know about those, get on the bottom of the sole. So if you're traveling around a lot, in that felt, which is generally wet, could be a problem. Whether they get around that by, say, having a, a dip somewhere like we do in the UK, a disinfectant dip for nets and stuff like that, maybe it should be a disinfectant bowl and you put your boots in there before you actually go fishing. How about? They can't put them everywhere, can they? So, a few tips there on how to cook skate and also how to check waders. They might help you catch that extra fish. We'll see you in the next episode. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, both channels, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors. We'll see you guys very shortly. Me, I'm off Perth Fishing.